There have been so many new Disney announcements lately that it's hard to keep it all straight. So what new rides should you be anticipating for all the Disney parks? And when should you be prepared to experience them in the future? We're giving you the full rundown today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Disney's gonna be breaking a lot of ground with their brand new rides over the next few years. And that's not just Disney World, that's all the Disney parks. So consider today's DFV video as an ultimate reference guide when it comes to what rides we should expect to see in which parks and when we're gonna start seeing them come to life. Let's start off with the D23 Fan Expo announcement from this year that really took everybody kind of off guard. And I'll admit it was a little controversial. There were some boos actually in the arena when they announced it. Apparently we're getting a Cars Land in Magic Kingdom right where the Rivers of America and Tom Sawyer Island currently reside. I am still trying to piece this together in my brain, but this is the best representation I can come up with right now. Ka-chow, y'all. Ka-chow. Okay, now here's the real concept art for you. According to Disney Experience's chairman, Josh Tomorrow, there will be two new Cars attractions in this future area. One's going to take you on a race through the mountains and wild terrain along mountain trails, dodging geysers and splashing through mud holes. And the second ride will be geared towards smaller racers that will be fun for the whole family. Now, I'm curious to see how closely these rides resemble the ones we've already got out in Disney California Adventure. Construction on this new area in Frontierland will begin early in 2025, which more than likely means it'll be around the same time we'll be seeing the Liberty Square Riverboat and Tom Sawyer rafts taking their final leisurely floats around the rivers of America. But Cars Land isn't the only new area we have to look forward to inside Magic Kingdom. Over on the Frontierland side of things, when all of Magic Kingdom's updates are said and done, we're gonna have a whopping total of four new rides inside the back of this park. Two of them will be Cars themed and two of them will be Villains themed. During the D23 Fan Expo this year, Josh Tomorrow finally let the cat out of the bag or rather the villains out of their I don't know, where, like prison? I don't know where they are. Anywho, villains, they're coming to Magic Kingdom. And as someone who wholeheartedly believes that a Disney hero is only as good as their villain, I am beyond stoked for this. So what will there be in Villains Land? Along with new dining and shopping that's on an incredibly twisted grand scale, according to Disney, they literally said twisted. There'll also be two brand new attractions. We weren't given too many details about what these attractions might look like. In fact, I don't think we were given any details aside from them being villains themed. So all we've got to go off of is the limited concept art we've been given. By the looks of it, Magic Kingdom will be receiving another castle, but this one seems like it's Maleficent themed and be towering high above the land. There's a lot of briars going on. Now, it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest if we get a villains themed dark ride around this castle area, especially since that would directly compete with the new Dark Universe ride, Monsters Unchained, The Frankenstein Experiment, coming to Epic Universe after the park's opening next year. And if you look really closely off to the left of Maleficent's castle, you can see next to the dragon, all these looping thorny vines that almost appear to take on the shape of a roller coaster track. If you look at the bottom, you'll see what looks like a blue watery area. You'll see there are coaster tracks in an actual coaster vehicle with people pulling a corner down there. Now, while Disney hasn't announced any kind of timeline for this new land yet, we doubt we'll see an official one for a little while. However, since work has already begun on the new area of the park, we hope it'll be completed relatively soon, but our best assumption is that we're gonna see it alive and well within the next five years or so, since that's a similar amount of time we saw between the announcement and completion of Star Wars Galaxy's Edge in both Disneyland and Hollywood Studios. It's okay though, I'm perfectly happy biding my time on the People Mover until then. Good old People Mover. Speaking of People Mover, or just Magic Kingdom rides in general, if you scan the QR code you see on the screen right now or head to disneyfoodblog.com slash Magic Kingdom, you can pick up our free Magic Kingdom quick guide, which is gonna give you a full list of all the MK rides, plus their height requirements and specific park locations and projected queue lengths. That's right, we're gonna talk wait times. Now this guide will also hook you up with recommended restaurants, tips on how to get to and from the park, and bonus sample itineraries as well. So QR code or DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Magic Kingdom, and this is totally free. Don't have to pay a single cent for it. Next up, let's talk Test Track. Now I know waiting for all the new stuff can be hard, but the good news about Test Track is that we might not have to wait that much longer before we get to finally see it all fresh and revamped inside Epcot. Walt Disney Imagineering is collaborating with Chevrolet to embrace the spirit of innovation while celebrating a human drive for a brighter tomorrow. Mm. 
Disney puns, gotta love them. Now, the updated version of this ride is anticipated to highlight the past and present and future of transportation, because Disney's really into their car stuff lately. Disney also confirmed the queue will feature six distinct exhibits, and within each exhibit, you'll learn about different vehicles as well as the people behind the creation of said vehicles. But within the ride itself, Imagineers are currently busy adding new show scenes that will showcase technological advances, illustrating how our lifestyles and relationships to mobility connect everyone. Again, that's Disney speak. You'll take a joy ride through scenes that focus on onboard technology and customization, personalization, and ending with a trip through a scenic outdoor route. Construction on this reimagined experience has already begun, and if you look closely at Disney's concept art, you're going to notice that the new building is very reminiscent of the original pavilion design that housed one of my favorites, I'm between World of Motion and Horizons, in terms of my favorite original Epcot attraction, but this is going to go back to the original kind of design for World of Motion, which I'm super excited about because when I was a kid, World of Motion was my very favorite ride. And it's kind of cool because right now, if you kind of go by on the monorail, if you go by Test Track, you can see they've really taken the whole canopy down and it really is looking more like its original self. Okay, I know you're waiting for a release date, so let me cut to the chase. We don't know the exact opening day or month, but we do know that Test Track will reopen in 2025. There's actually one Disney ride on this list that's going to be opening even sooner than Test Track, as in this year, but we'll talk more about that later on. Moving on to Animal Kingdom and the Tropical Americas, or Pueblo Esperanza. Animal Kingdom's new land that's replacing Dinoland USA won't be getting just one new ride, or two new rides, but three new rides. During the D23 fan event, Disney officially confirmed that Dinoland will become Pueblo Pueblo Esperanza, which will feature popular Disney properties like Encanto and Indiana Jones. So what new rides can we expect to find here? Ride numero uno will be a new giant carousel sculpted by a local wood carver. That'll be the smallest of the three rides, but it's still going to be awesome to see. Ride number two is going to be an Encanto themed ride that takes place inside the Madrigal family's casita. The story of this ride will pick up after Antonio receives his special talking to animals gift. Much like in the movie, you're going to be able to travel through his expanse of rainforest room while also bumping into several Madrigal family members along the way. And it's kind of looking like it's going to be a boat ride. And ride number three is going to be a new Indiana Jones adventure ride. Now this one's going to feature a brand new Indy story following Indy's recent discovery of a perfectly preserved Maya temple. And much like if you give a mouse a cookie, if you give Indiana Jones a perfectly preserved Maya temple, he's going to go explore it. Anybody else read that book to their kid like 10 jillion times? Yeah. Okay. Now, while the storyline of this ride will be different, the ride system should be very similar to what we've seen other Indiana Jones rides look like over in Disneyland and Tokyo Disney Sea, which means this ride will indeed be taking over the dinosaur ride. Bittersweet for sure. Love to see the new, but sure gonna miss that Dr. Seeker yelling, they're not gonna make it. They're not gonna make it. Hey, they made it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to what kind of little nods and Easter eggs they put in from dinosaur to this new ride. Construction on the new land's gonna begin super soon this fall, but construction will take place in phases with the entire land finishing up some time in 2027. That means you still got plenty of time to ride Dinosaur one last time and go get that dino. Now this past spring, we saw new ride scenes added to the Star Tours ride over in Hollywood Studios and Disneyland and Disneyland Paris. But now we're gonna be getting even more Star Wars based missions for a completely different Star Tours attraction. Disney revealed that Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run in both Hollywood Studios and Disneyland will be incorporating new storylines that go along with the release of the franchise's upcoming films in 2020. And these new storylines are going to feature the dynamic duo we've come to know, love, and sob over, Mando and Grogu. Okay, my heart is pounding over this recent announcement. Out of excitement and nerves. Gonna try not to get ahead of myself here, let's take it from the top. Monsters Inc. Land, aka Monstropolis, will be the newest land added to Hollywood Studios. Turns out the monsters have really turned over a new leaf and are gonna start inviting humans into their world so we can all check out their monstrously exciting dining opportunities and shops and most importantly, their Laugh Factory. For the first time ever, we'll finally get to visit the Laugh Factory right alongside Sully and Mike. At least the first time ever in Disney World. You can go in the Laugh Factory already over in Tokyo. And that means we're gonna get to ride a door through the door vault 
built while experiencing Disney's first ever suspended coaster. Construction on this new area is going to begin next year, but Disney still hasn't told us where exactly they're going to be putting this new land. Now, I'd appreciate it if they'd just rip that band-aid off for us already. In some concept art, it looks like this new monsters area is going to take over the animation courtyard, which makes a lot of sense to me since there's not a whole lot going on in that area of the park right now anyway. But in other concept art angles, it also looks like monsters could go around the Muppets courtyard area, Grand Avenue, which would be devastating because I so love that area of the park with my entire heart. Now, if they got rid of that, it'd probably hurt me just as much as the removal of the great movie ride, if not more. But no use crying over milk that hasn't even spilled yet, so we'll keep you in the loop and let you know once we hear about Monstropolis' official home in DHS. So we've talked a good deal about Disney World's future additions. Let's switch over to the West Coast for a bit where the new rides are just as exciting. Need me to prove it? Fine. A new Avatar experience is coming to Disney California Adventure, which is good news for us because Pandora and Animal Kingdom is one of our favorite Disney park lands ever. By the way, drop your favorite Parkland in the comments because we want to see which one dominates the competition so we can hone in on it for future videos. Now, this isn't going to be a copy and paste replica of the Pandora on the East Coast. Rather, this Pandora will have all new adventures that dive more into the Avatar The Way of Water film, as well as the future Avatar films that are yet to be released. And of course, there's going to be a brand new ride for us to experience too. Within this new ride, you're going to explore areas of Pandora during a ride that Disney describes as a thrilling excursion that will bring all the action, excitement, and wonder of Avatar, taking guests all the way to the wide open seas of Pandora. Now, I just want to take a moment here to let you know that Bria is giving me a secret message in my script, letting me know that she is a huge sucker for bioluminescence, asking me if I knew that about her. And I am actually fully aware that that girl goes to like a meow wolf every single weekend. So I think black lighting is her natural lighting. Anyway, just a little secret. Bria and I have these little messages to each other in my scripts all the time, but no official opening dates have been released for Avatar yet. So it's probably still got a ways to go before it's ready for prime time, but definitely crossing my fingers that it's going to be worth the wait. Alrighty, it is about time, Avengers Campus. We've been waiting to hear more about your so-called imminent ride additions for uh, quite some time. And while I say the e-ticket you've been teasing us about for years still feels pretty under wraps, it's also refreshing to see that you're not just planning on giving us one Marvel ride, but two in Disney California Adventures, Avengers Campus. Hard to say adventure, Avengers. But first, let's talk about that e-ticket. Avengers Infinity Defense will be based around a new technology that allows the Avengers to jump between worlds. But guess what? It's gone missing. Egad! Word on the street is that King Thanos is using it to wreak havoc everywhere, so recruits are going to have to travel to iconic locations like Asgard and Wakanda and New York City, alongside the MCU's greatest heroes, to face off against King Thanos and retrieve the powerful tech from his evil clutches. Because we all know how well things went when Thanos got his hand on some rather powerful items the last time. Let's just say, I don't want to see this guy snap anytime soon if you're picking up what I'm putting down. Initially, we thought this ride was going to be a lot like Guardians of the Galaxy caused Rewind and Epcot, but after the D23 Fan Expo and getting to look at the vehicle models plus the updated concept art, this ride appears to be more like a 4D ride simulator, probably along the lines of what Tokyo Disney Sea just got with their new Peter Pan's Neverland Adventure ride. And then there's Ride Numero Dos, a new Iron Man attraction called Stark Flight Lab, with Robert Downey Jr. reprising his role as Tony Stark. In Stark Flight Lab, you're going to sit in two person pods and deploy to a test station where a giant robot arm grabs your pod and starts whirling you around in simulated flight. Apparently this ride will have multiple versions so you can possibly get a new ride through each time you board. Anybody else think that this looks kind of like those big robotic arms they used to have in malls? And I think they had them in Disney World for a little while where you could design your own coaster and then it would like let you ride your coaster. I don't know. Looks like the same thing to me, but we'll see. Anyway, the Avengers Campus expansion will start to break ground in 2025. Next up on my list is the Coco Boat Ride. Yep, we're finally getting a Coco Boat Ride. Is it taking over Grand Fiesta Tour in the Mexico Pavilion the way everybody thought it would? No, it is going to Disney California Adventure. Surprise, surprise, I know. Now, when talking about this new ride, Josh Tomorrow mentioned that the Imagineers will be drawing inspiration for the attraction from beloved classics like Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Interesting, but a solid foundation. Anyway, thanks to the latest audio animatronics technology, the characters from Coco will be able to serenade guests in a way that, as Disney states, you'll have to see to believe. This new Coco attraction is set to break ground in 2026. 
And now for a ride that'll be opening in Disneyland this year, Tiana's Bayou Adventure will finally take its big splash over on the West Coast on November 15th, 2024. While we've already been able to enjoy this attraction over in Magic Kingdom since June 28th, we'll be able to start taking that log flume plummet in California around the start of the holiday season. Along with the opening of Tiana's ride, Disneyland's Critter Country will also be appropriately renamed Bayou Country on the same day. And along with the opening of Bayou Country, there'll also be two new shops too. Shop number Number one is a spot called Ray's Berets, which will be replacing the Briar Patch. Here you're going to find headwear and apparel, accessories, toys, and more. And shop number two is going to become Lewis's Critter Club. This shop will also have apparel and accessories and home decor featuring Princess Tiana, as well as some of your favorite critters. So since we're on the subject of log flumes, let's talk about a log flume announcement that I sure wasn't expecting to hear about during the D23 Fan Expo this year, or, or at all, let's be honest. An all new Lion King Land is on the horizon for Paris's newish park, Disney Adventure World. I say newish because Paris is pretty much getting the MGM Hollywood Studios treatment here. So it's gonna be the same park that they currently have, the Walt Disney Studios Park, just with a new name and a lot of new updates to spruce things up. Inside the new Lion King Land, you'll be able to explore the Pride Lands with new areas of dining and shopping and attractions. And judging by the concept art, it looks like the heart of this new area will also feature a log flume style ride too. Now I wonder how similar the layout is going to be to Tiana's Bayou Adventure. The only time will tell. No official release dates for this new ride or area yet, but this is not the only new ride that Disney Adventure World is projected to receive. It seems like the world of Frozen is the flavor of choice for Disney's overseas parks and Disney Adventure World in Paris will be getting its own Frozen ride. World of Frozen will be coming to this refreshed park officially in 2026. And with its opening, expect to see yet another iteration of the well-loved Frozen Ever After dark ride. Not gonna lie, after Tokyo Disney Sea opened their Rapunzel's Lantern Festival dark ride along with the opening of the new Fantasy Spring section of the park, I was really hoping for some sort of D23 Tangled ride announcement for the US parks too. Disneyland, Disney World, I would have accepted either. And yet, once again, our girl with the magic glowing hair when she sings has been shortchanged over in the States. Guess it's a good thing she's getting new rides elsewhere, like Paris, for instance. Ripon say, this new ride with a first word I can't even pronounce will be located over in the soon to be Adventure World Disney Paris Park. And it looks like it's gonna be more of a spinning style ride, similar to Alien Swirling Saucers in Hollywood Studios or Mater's Junkyard Jamboree in DCA, kind of a Baymax Happy Ride vibe in Tokyo, though it could also be really spinny like Mad Tea Party. The concept art is still a little hazy when it comes to just how dizzying this ride's gonna be. What the concept art does make very clear is that ride vehicles are gonna be designed to look like the boat that Flynn Rider and Rapunzel take out across the water to watch that famous floating lantern scene, which gives me chills just thinking about it. We don't have any official dates for when we should expect to see this new Tangled Spin Ride live and in motion, but since it's going to be part of the new Adventure World area, expect it sometime after spring 2025, which is when the new Adventure World entrance is slated to open. Now, Hong Kong's already got the world of Frozen and Albert the Monkey over in Mystic Manor, so what more could it possibly need? How about more Avengers? Previously, Hong Kong added two Marvel-themed experiences to their park, one being the Iron Man experience and the other being Ant-Man and the Wasp Nano Battle. But now they're working on a third Marvel experience themed around Spider-Man and Doc Ock. From what we've been told so far, the story's gonna kick off with Peter Parker coming to the Stark Expo to show off his latest technological Marvel, which uh, usually gets him into trouble, so maybe he should, you know, stop that. However, whatever this little gadget winds up being is going to attract the attention of Spider-Man's arch nemesis, Doc Ock, who's ready to cause some major trouble. Guess that means we're going to have to help Peter protect his new tech, though I don't know what good I'm going to do against a guy with multiple mechanical tentacles. Mmm, plastic cheese review? I'm really good at those. So far, we don't have any exact dates for when this new Spider-Man ride will be open, so I guess you're going to have to pay Albert the Monkey a few extra visits as you bide your time until we hear more. I really, really love Albert the monkey, so that's okay. Now hold up, Spidey isn't done with the parks yet. He's got more attractions up his sleeves or his webs. I don't know, what, whatever. A new Spider-Man coaster is currently in the works over in Shanghai Disneyland. And get this, it'll be the first ever Marvel attraction for the Shanghai park. This new ride is gonna be a high energy thrill coaster. And I don't know if this is gonna shock any of you, but apparently as the ride story goes, Spider-Man will have gotten himself in a bit of a tight spot. So you'll have to follow him around at high speeds to help get him out of trouble. Again, 
Don't know how I'm qualified to help you out there, Peter, but I guess I'll do my best. Like I already said, initial construction preparation for the new ride is already underway, so this is another project Disney is actively working on right now, and we can't wait to see it in action. Once again, I find myself ho-humming and sighing and missing Tokyo Disney, and I know I'm going to feel that way even more when this new Wreck-It Ralph ride breaks away inside Tokyo Disneyland. Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters is going to close permanently in October 2024 to make way for a Wreck-It Ralph ride, which could open in 2026 or later, according to Disney. Now, Disney shared that this new attraction will be an indoor interactive gameplay experience, perfect for children and adults, and follows Ralph on an action-packed journey as he sets out to prove to everyone that he is a true hero with a big heart. Along the way, Ralph meets up with his friends, including his very best friend in the whole wide world, Vanellope von Schweetz. Once you're on the ride, you'll enter the candy-themed racing game Sugar Rush, which is being attacked by sugar bugs, glitches created by King Candy, and guests will team up with the beloved film characters Ralph and Vanellope to transform the sugar bugs back to their original kawaii confectionery such as cookies and cakes. Now on July 31st of this year, Tokyo Disneyland closed their version of Space Mountain and it's going to stay closed until 2027. Why? Because the Oriental Land Company is busy transforming their Space Mountain into a completely revamped experience. When Space Mountain eventually reopens in Tokyo, it'll feature brand new special effects while maintaining that original Space Mountain concept. All right, there is so much to look forward to across all the Disney parks, and it doesn't stop with just the rides. So stay tuned as we continue to cover even more new Disney attractions in the making, and don't forget to pick up our free Magic Kingdom quick guide over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Magic Kingdom. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.